Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to build an all-in-one retro gaming console for under $70. And here are some of the systems you'll be able to emulate once you get this up and running. The Amiga, an Intellivision, Atari 2600, Sinclair ZX Spectrum, Nintendo Entertainment System, Sega's Master System, TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega's Game Gear, Sony's PlayStation 1, and finally Neo Geo and MAME arcade games. Alright guys, let's get started. First thing you'll need is a Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is a powerful little single board computer. Uh, this comes in two models, Model A and Model B. Model A has 256 megabytes of RAM and Model B has 512. There's some other differences, um, mainly in the positioning of ports, uh, but if you want to look up more, uh, there will be links at the end of this video. Here's a closer look at the Pi. Uh, it comes with an Ethernet port, two 2.0 USB ports, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, RCA video socket, an SD card slot, micro USB port, and an HDMI port. A few other things you'll need, an SD card, that's where your operating system will go, Linux will be, we write Linux onto here, and then uh, stick it into there and it reads it off the card. The larger card you have, the more ROMs you're gonna be able to hold. I went with a 16 gig, uh, I don't recommend you go any lower than a 4. A case for your, res uh, for your uh, Raspberry Pi, you want to get in dirty out there. Uh, power supply, anything, I'm using a Blackberry phone charger that goes to a micro USB. Uh, there will be a link at the end of the video with uh, a site that has a list of all compatible phone chargers. Uh, but if you don't have one, there is a $10 option one uh, online and there will be a link to that too. Uh, PC controller. I went with one that looks like a Super Nintendo controller. As long as it has a USB 2.0, you should be fine. And you'll need a keyboard as well. Uh, any USB keyboard will work. And the last thing you'll need here is an HDMI cord. Any HDMI cord will do as long as it does video and audio. Uh, this is an $8 cord from a big box store. Uh, you'll need a router to transfer your ROMs. And along with that, uh, if you're on a PC, you'll need to download a software called CyberDuck. Go to cyberduck.ch and just go ahead and download the trial version off of that. Uh, there are separate instructions at the end of this video for Linux and Mac. Next, we need to download the disk image that we're going to put onto our SD card. Uh, so you're going to head on over to blog.petrockblock.com slash download slash retro pie project image and you're going to download that image right there. If you are a Mac or a Linux user, you can just stay on that page uh, the instructions for how to burn the image onto the disk are right there. Uh, Windows users, you're going to head on over to a separate page. And all you lucky Windows users, head on over to the address at the bottom of the screen, scroll down to the Create Your Own section uh, and the subsection Using Noobs, and follow those instructions. Uh, it's called Noobs for a reason. It's pretty easy. So get that image burned on the disk and come back whenever you're done. So now that you've done that, the next step is simple. Take your Pi, take your SD card, and now we're ready to go ahead, plug in our controller to uh, the top USB port, and your keyboard into the bottom spot. And now we're ready to plug it in and turn on the power. So hook up your HDMI cord, grab your controller, and plug in the power.
Yo guys, let's get this controller set up. Uh, so first thing you're going to do is just go ahead and press the A button. Uh, it's going to ask you to do player 2, just hold the A button to move on. Now you're just going to follow these on-screen prompts. Press up, left, right, accept. I made accept the A button, I made B my back button. Start got me to the menu, my R trigger jumps to the letter. Uh, let's go with Y and X for page up and down and we're done. On to Emulation Station. And now that we're in Emulation Station, we want to exit Emulation Station. Yeah, I know we just got started, but we're not quite ready to have fun yet. We're gonna have to exit. And... And a quick note right now, uh, something I, I should have mentioned earlier is your RetroPie has to be hooked up to the network right now at this point. So, uh, if it's not, disconnect it, go to a computer or go to uh, a monitor that you can plug in with an HDMI and, and have your uh, Ethernet cord plugged in and connected to the network. Uh, and then once you get to this command prompt, then we're going to type in uh, ifconfig and we're going to get our IP address. And there it is, look for an, uh, a line that says inet ADDR and write that number down. So let's unplug the HDMI cord unplug the power cord, um, plug the controller and the keyboard, and we're going to go over to the computer and we're going to configure our controls the easy way. Now what we're going to be doing here is getting our controller files. So we need to tell the emulation station what controls to use for each emulator. So go to the address below, type in your address bar, copy all the text on that page, paste it into a uh, notepad and you're going to save it to your desktop as a retroarc.cfg and that's going to set our controls for pretty much all the emulators except for Genesis for some reason it's weird so we're going to go to this link and we're going to copy all that text paste it into a uh, notepad and this one's going to be titled dgenrc okay now we're going to hook the RetroPie up to our computer so go ahead Plug the power in first. Go ahead and plug your Ethernet cord in. Alright guys, it's a final stretch here. A new computer. Open up uh, Cyberduck. Click Open Connection. And here you're going to get a list of options on the drop down tab. Click uh, SFTP Transfer. Uh, pull that IP address you wrote down earlier. Put it in as the server. Your username is Pi. Your password is Raspberry. Navigate to RetroPie Configs All, and then on your desktop, drag those two files over and drag those into the All folder. Go ahead and overwrite, and you're set. Your controllers for uh, all your emulators in Genesis should be working now, and now you just have to transfer your ROMs over. So in the RetroPie folder, navigate to ROMs, you'll see a list of ROM folders there, and uh, each one is, is kind of self-descriptive uh, self there. Just drag the ROMs from uh, your Super Nintendo ROMs over to the SNES folder, and uh, there you go. That's all you got to do. And now, finally, the moment of truth. You have your ROMs on your Pi. Finally got the controller set up. Ready to plug it in. Grab your controller. If you're wondering why I have a different startup image than you see, it's because it can be changed. Uh, if you go to the Pet Rock block, blog, uh, you can easily surf the forums there. Uh, there's a lot of customization you can do. You can customize Emulation Station itself, so the different screens uh, display whatever you want them to. Here we are at Emulation Station. Pressing left and right on the controller should take you to your different uh, emulators. Go ahead and try one out. Show you guys a little gem here. Thanks to a podcast called Back in My Play, I learned of this game. There you go guys, 
Thanks for following along. Uh, I hope you got it up and working. I hope it's all uh, straight. Get to play in those games you wanted to play. And I'm going to play a little uh, Journey to Silius to take you out. Oh, oh.